Yeah, so I have a history of, as I've mentioned a few times, anxiety and panic attacks. I remember one awful time at university where I had to get up to present something. And as I as I got up to go to the stage to present, it went completely white in front of my eyes. I felt like my lungs were on fire. And I had an experience that's called dissociation, where you, you almost feel like you come out of your body and you're watching yourself. I was watching myself from the ceiling. My name's Chloe Brotheridge. I'm a hypnotherapist and a coach. And I've written two books, one called The Anxiety Solution and Brave New Girl, Imposter Syndrome. I help them to quiet the inner critic and move forward with things with more confidence. Chloe, thank you so much for joining me on the Experts podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Can we go back to the sort of early days of how you discovered hypnotherapy, how you discovered the work that you do and and also you know, if you were to to kind of rewind, what was it like when you first started thinking about kind of building up a, an expert brand or a personal brand in, in this space? Yeah. So I, I discovered hypnotherapy through recordings, through trying to help my myself with my confidence and with anxiety that I was experiencing and um, listened every day to these recordings for a couple of weeks and found that it actually made a difference. And I was pretty surprised actually that it, that it did help and done sort of meditation and things before then. So it was kind of that kind of world was in my world. And so I trained as a hypnotherapist, having met a few hypnotherapists in my life. I think my mom's friend was a hypnotherapist. I met um, a doctor who was also a hypnotherapist and I was traveling and a few other people. And it just sort of seeded this um, idea in my mind. And I was working in the NHS as a nutritionist. And yeah, so in the beginning, I remember training, this was nine years ago now, and just having no clue about how I was going to get clients. Just, I remember asking myself and almost everyone that I would meet or if I ever met another, I don't know, I met kind of nutritionists at networking events or coaches and sort of like, how do you find clients? It seems like this impossible mountain to climb. I just can't imagine how that's going to happen. And of course, you know, slowly and gradually it did, it did happen. And were you in a position at that time where you had perhaps a stable job or career trajectory that you were going on and there was a decision to kind of go in a different direction? Yeah, so I was, so I was working in the NHS. I was living in Essex and my boyfriend was in London. It was a really nice job working for the NHS. I was teaching kids to cook healthy meals and families. It was a lovely job, but yeah, I knew I wanted to help people in a bigger way and I wanted to, um, be able to kind of spread a message without having kind of constraints on it. So I think the NHS was, I knew that I knew I couldn't really continue down that path. And I'd also um, been having a lot of therapy myself and had found that I'd gone from someone that was extremely unself-aware, extremely um, unable to talk about things to someone that actually had discovered this amazing kind of self insight and ability to share and kind of working through my own shame about things and really wanted to share that with other people and help other people with the things that I'd learned about my own kind of experience with anxiety. What were the most important things for you when you were getting started? Was it, you know, the first step getting qualified? Were there any other elements of that kind of getting set up for success that you you remember being important to you in the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I know that a big aspect of it in the beginning was was confidence and having the confidence to see clients and put myself out there and believe that it was is kind of possible to to you know make a go of this new career. And I was practicing on everyone that I could find I would see friends of friends for free I did kind of exchange sessions with other therapists so we could refer people to each other and and also just kind of getting more practice in um so yeah I just practice on a lot of people this was in the days before Instagram so there was no Instagram then I was using Twitter a lot to connect with people and spending a lot of time engaging with people on Twitter um you know, sending a lot of tweets, kind of building that up. And that was something that helped me to, I think at one point, most of my clients were coming from Twitter um, because I just put all my energy into that and decided that that was going to be the way I was going to connect with people. 
Chloe, what's one thing that you wish you'd known when you first started this journey of building your business? I wish I'd known that it's okay to start before you're ready. I remember even when I was coaching with you three years ago, you suggesting things for me to do that I'm probably only doing now or in the last year. Because at the time I was just like, I'm not quite ready for that. But I kind of wish at the time I'd been a bit more like, you know what, I don't feel ready to do this, but I'm going to give it a go. Great advice. What's one thing that you wish you'd done sooner in your business? I think doing more group work. I think there's something really dynamic about doing things in groups. Um, that that just adds a, a kind of exciting flavor and that aspect of community. And I wish I'd kind of got started on that scene because it's really rewarding. Was there any reason why you didn't? Was there a feeling of, you know, maybe not being able to deliver value in that setting or another reason that you hesitated on working in groups? I think just wondering how I would get the group together and um, and do that. And at the time, I didn't really, I didn't necessarily follow a lot of coaches. I didn't necessarily have a lot of friends who were doing similar things. And I think I just didn't, it wasn't necessarily in my sphere of kind of what was possible. So yeah, so maybe I wish I'd been exposed to that a bit sooner. Why, why do you do what you do? So I'm on a healing journey to, to heal myself. What's the best part of your job? Being creative and being in control of my schedule. And, and finally, Chloe, what's the best piece of advice you think you've, you've received in your business journey so far? I don't know if this is necessarily business advice, but I remember when I, a few years ago, when I was kind of, I would say overworking and overpressurizing myself, my granny just kind of sitting me down. My granny is like a very wise old woman who meditates for hours a day. And she said, you know, you've got to make time for enjoying your life. You've got to make that the most important thing because at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. So make, make sure you're making time for that. Did you sort of know what was possible for you in terms of the type of business and the size of business that you would be able to build? It's, it's kind of a strange thing. I think often hypnotherapists will do this, will see all sorts of different issues, but it, I don't know if you're seeing someone for weight loss, smoking and anxiety, it's very, they're very different things. And actually, I think probably we can do a much better job if we do niche and, and specialize in a certain area. And it did take me a couple of years just seeing anyone that would see me basically out of that kind of desperation of of starting off to actually thinking about, you know, who do I want to see? Who can I serve the most? Um, How can my own experiences kind of inform the work that I'm doing? And so it did take a couple of years before I kind of niched down into to really focusing on helping people with anxiety. And it was a bit scary to do that because there is a sense that actually I'm going to lose clients or I'm going to not have enough money or I can't be saying no to people when I, you know, just quit my day job and, you know, am I going to have enough money to pay the rent? But actually making that decision was one of the biggest, you know, the best things that I did. And um, the Anxiety Solution book came quite soon afterwards, after I'd kind of um, stab- well, decided that I was going on this journey of, of really focusing on helping people with anxiety. So it was a good decision, but it did take me a while to get there. When we talk about the the sort of vision for your business, was it to was it always to just build up your own client base and to expand your personal brand? I mean, what kind of vision did you have around you know where you wanted to go in terms of size and breadth of your reach? I I suppose in the beginning, it was just about having a sustainable business and not because for for a while, I think about a year and a half, I was still working the NHS, seeing clients in the evening and kind of over about a year and a half kind of went down in my days from the day job and and did that. Um, It's interesting because... I think sometimes you almost need someone else to um, have a have a vision that you can't necessarily see for yourself. And certainly, you know, several years ago, I didn't have a lot of confidence in myself and, you know, struggled with my self-esteem. And so there were definitely people in my life that could see this kind of bigger vision or bigger idea that helped me to, to see that as well. So um, when I got my book agent... I hadn't actually thought about writing a book or I told myself, you know, that's just not going to happen or at least not for several years. And actually having someone else kind of believe in this idea and put confidence to do that. So I would say it has built up over the years. That I've become more and more clear and give myself permission to dream bigger. And as the kind of years have gone on, I have really focused on the things that I want to achieve and gone as far to sort of writing them down every day and really sort of focusing on specific things that I'd like to do. 
I suppose for most experts, and this will be a really common theme throughout this podcast, there is a point where you realize that you're trying to wear all the hats, you know, so I'm sure at that time you were managing your marketing, managing, you know, client, client services. So following up payments and making sure people were booked in and, and we're sort of wearing the, the operations hat and, the, and, and doing all of the things as well as delivering that expert service. And so can you share some of the, the decisions that you made when you sort of realized that perhaps the business was too heavily reliant on you and, and how that formed the decision perhaps to launch a course or to kind of go down some of these other avenues? Yeah, I think it's a lot. It's a lot to do when you have to um, juggle so many things and, and be almost like an expert at marketing and PR and admin and, and the actual doing your therapy work or doing your coaching work almost becomes like a smaller part of the job. I do remember finding it overwhelming and stressful and it's kind of a bit counterproductive if your job is to help people to be calm and actually in that process you're stressing yourself out um so I think a big thing for me was um hiring some help it's just an assistant to begin with I was able to to sort of take that step and actually realize I don't need to do everything I don't need to answer every email myself you know that can be done by someone else and so these days I tend to have people helping me with projects or someone doing graphic design or someone doing some editing for me someone doing some tech stuff for me instead of having sort of a team that's with me all the time I have one assistant and I tend to outsource the different um, specific kind of tasks that don't need to necessarily be done by me. There's a there's a big piece of building your personal brand that you were were quite conscious about, which was you know getting up in front of people and speaking and 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 most people sort of see a confident speaker and think that's a natural ability that they have always had. And I know you've really worked on yourself and and grown into that role of having a personal presence and speaking and putting yourself forward for those opportunities. I'd love for you to just share a little bit about that experience and also how you went about getting those opportunities to speak and be on stages and be featured on festival lineups and so on. Yeah, so I have a history of, as I've mentioned a few times, anxiety and panic attacks. I remember uh, one awful time at university where I had to get up to present something and as I as I got up to go to the stage to present it went completely white in front of my eyes I felt like my lungs were on fire and I had an experience that's called dissociation where you you almost feel like you come out of your body and you're watching yourself I was watching myself from the ceiling and it was really really awful I managed to get through it somehow but I've no idea how I you know managed to say words in that in that moment because I was so panicky and yeah I really struggled with um you know even social anxiety even people you know meeting people one-on-one was a challenge for me in the beginning of my business and so the thought of having to get on stage and speak to people or go to a networking event or something like that that was massively that was a massive big deal for me in the beginning and um yeah, I remember the first workshop I did where I um, put posters all around Hackney telling people about this workshop and, you know, invited everyone I could. And and I think one person came to that workshop, the first one I did. And I was extremely nervous about it for weeks in advance. And then to have one person kind of show up was, um, yeah, it was fine because she actually had a good experience. But, it, you know, it was a lot of... Um, a lot of getting nervous over over something that really wasn't a big deal, you know, having experienced it. That is such good advice and such a, an amazing piece of wisdom to to finish our conversation on. And I often have to remind myself as well as my clients that, that this is meant to be a fun journey. We're meant to be enjoying what we do. And if we're just working harder, harder, harder and buying into that hustle all the time, we often lose sight of why we built a business in the first place. And Um, the work that you do is so incredibly inspiring to so many people, Chloe, and it's certainly inspired me so, so much um, over the years. So thanks for taking the time to, to share your business journey and your learnings on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to chat to you. 